Building a yeast starter enables yeast cells to propagate prior to adding them to your precious wort. But building them from scratch is a pain. The recent popularity of canned wort greatly simplifies the process, but it uh, um, can become costly and inconvenient to purchase. Trust me, I once spent $100 on a case of canned wort, but you can make your own shelf stable canned wort at home for less than 50 cents per starter in ingredient cost. And you may have all the equipment you need at home. Let me show you how. I'm Martin Keane, and this is The Brilosophy Show. Five years ago, I brewed a Belgian triple. So what we've got in here is about 27 pounds of two row. That recipe called for 500 billion yeast cells, and I was too lazy to make a yeast starter. Uh, we did not do a yeast starter. So I bought my way out of the problem. So what we did is we bought a ton of yeast. We bought basically five of these packets. That's something like $50 in yeast, but I had my reasons. You see, I'd become terrified of yeast starters. The basic process though is to add some dry malt extract to water, bring it to boil for a few minutes, chill it down and pitch the yeast. And in the process of heating up my starter, I shattered my cheaply made Erlenmeyer flask. I've not made a yeast starter that way since it was honestly terrifying. Shards of glass everywhere. So. So ultimately, I learned a much better way to do this using my own canned wort. And today I can have a starter spinning within less than what, two minutes of effort of getting started. The process I'm going to show you is something I've been doing for years, but it's not my own. I have homebrewnotes.com to thank for that. And the link to their blog post is in the description. All right, let's get going. So here's what I'm going to make. In each one of these mason jars, I'm going to create concentrated canned wort. And the idea is that when this is made, I'll be able to take whatever wort is in here, put this into a flask, top up the water to one litre, and I will then have a wort that has an original gravity of 1040, which is ideal for yeast starters. If I want to create a two litre starter instead of a one litre starter, I'll just use two of these in there, add the water to two liters and then I'd have a two liter starter and so forth. So let's cover how to do this and we'll start with the equipment. So the obvious thing is you're gonna need some mason jars. Uh, these are the one pint mason jar size plus the ring plus a lid. The other big thing equipment wise that I need is a pressure canner. Now this is one I got off Amazon years ago uh, I think it's about 150 bucks now, it's the Presto one. And the idea is this will create pressure. Uh, I have a weight on here, and this will make sure that I have 15 PSI of pressure when I'm canning. So this is the thing that you may not have lying around and you may need to purchase. I also have a heat source here as well. This is just a, an electric hob and kitchen scale. Then let's take a look at the ingredients. Well, we need some DME, dry malt extract. I'm just using light DME. The other thing I'm using is just some yeast nutrient. And then the last ingredient is water. You really want to use a water source that is free of chlorine or chloramines. My tap water has chloramines. And just with, as with brewing, that's best avoided. So I'm using reverse osmosis water that I just used from my RO system for that. You could use bottled water as well for that. Okay, so I'm gonna make 10 mason jars of this. That's because 10 of these fit on the bottom layer here of my pressure canner. I could actually add a second layer so I could have 20. I probably am not gonna need 20 liters of yeast starter anytime soon, so I'll just stick with 10. Let me show you the process. So the first thing is we need to add four ounces of light DME into the mason jar. To that, I'm just gonna add a scientific sprinkle of yeast nutrient. And then I need to add eight ounces or 240 milliliters of the water. All right, that's everything I need. Just need to do that nine more times. And that's the last one. 
Now, before we get to the canning process itself, it's worth considering what we're trying to do here. The key scientific principle behind canning wort is heat sterilization. When you heat your wort during the canning process, you're killing off harmful bacteria and other potential spoilage organisms. This heat treatment stops any enzymatic activity that could otherwise break down the sugars in the wort, saving those for the yeast we'll be adding when we actually make the starter. Now, the canning process involves both heat and pressure. The, the high pressure allows the temperature inside the pressure canner to exceed the usual boiling point of water, and that's what sterilizes the wort. After the intense heat and pressure treatment, the sealed jars create a vacuum as they cool, and this vacuum seal prevents any new microorganisms from entering the jar, keeping your wort in a kind of suspended animation ready for you when you decide to pitch your yeast. And because the wort is sterilized and sealed, it's effectively shelf stable and can be stored for an extended period of time. I've kept jars around for years and used them successfully. All right, enough of all the theory, let's do it. I added some hot water to the bottom of the pressure can of kettle and then added my 10 mason jars. I sealed the lid up and added to the heat where I brought the water to boil that generated steam. And once I saw the steam coming out of the vent, I waited about 10 minutes and then added the weight. That's what you can hear right now. This is this weight that caps on top of the vent and it's a 15 PSI weight. So it's gonna start moving around and letting out any pressure that gets above 15 PSI. So as I start to build closer and closer to 15 PSI, this is gonna rattle more and more. And what I'm looking to do here is to maintain 15 PSI pressure for 15 minutes. At that point, I cut the heat and let this thing cool down. And that's not a process you want to rush. I'm gonna let that cool down naturally overnight so as not to have to worry about any pressure buildup in here. One way you can tell that there is no more pressure in the canner is to check this guy here. That will pop back down when the pressure is released. But look, this stuff's going to be way too hot to handle right now anyway. So I just leave it overnight, overnight open it up, and uh, retrieve the jars at that point. Next day now, let's uh, see what we got. No pressure. Now a couple of things to check at this point. One is you want to unscrew these lids. The reason for that is should there be some kind of infection in here, so if this really didn't work, we would want to make sure that the pressure could just vent by popping this top off rather than like exploding the glass or something. So remove these and you can reuse these. And the other thing then is to check the lid itself. Now if you can push down and the lid pops up and down again, that means there's not pressure in there and the seal didn't work. In this case, yeah, that's solid. So that is now good to use. Now to use these, it's simply a case of popping off this top, putting this into a sanitized Erlenmeyer flask, and then topping up with water to one liter, and then adding the yeast. Couldn't be easier. Look, I think once you have the equipment in place, this becomes a very inexpensive way to be able to quickly spin up yeast starters using this wort. And I love the flexibility too, just one jar per liter of starter that I want to make. So. No more having to buy store-bought can wort for me. I'm going with mason jars all the way. But I'd love to know if you're using a different process to build starters for yourself. If so, let me know in the comments. I'll be back next week. And until then, think beer.